Yo, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, I'm going to be showing you something by request from Leonard. His question is, how could you use a background texture filter after initially removing the existing background? And also, how to use other images in place of the background. So today, that's what we're going to do in the video. So let's go ahead and dive into the computer. All right, so here we are inside of the computer, and I'm not going to go into extreme detail of selecting photos. I'm just going to teach the technique, okay? So you'll go ahead and select the photos that you want to combine, which in this case, today, what we are going to combine is a photo of this random blue horse that is downtown in the city I live in and Batman. And we're going to click on layers over here on the right hand side. What this is going to do is open this particular thing in on one uh, or open both of those in layers inside of on one. All right. So I am creating an on photo file in order to do this. And all you have to do is really create a mask and, and do some other stuff there. So we're going to get into that here in a little bit. And if you hear my kids yelling and screaming in the background, uh, they're running around having fun in the house. So that is what it is. So as you can see, I have the Batman photo here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and we're going to start with the random horse. So I'm going to click on that and I always recommend you rename your stuff. So we're going to call this random horse and we'll call this Batman. Okay. So now that I have those relabeled to what I want them to be, the first thing I need to do with this particular horse is cut it out of the background. What I'm going to do is click on mask, go to AI masking, and I'm going to very loosely paint this just to show you the, the concept. I don't want to make this video too long. So I'm just going to select as much of the uh, outer edges of the horse as I can get. Just so that way on one nose, I want the horse to stay in my selection. And that should be good. Now I'm going to hit Shift X so I can paint out, make my brush larger. And you'll do what's appropriate for your particular image. Looks like I went over the ear a little bit, but as I said, I'm not going to be precise with this mask. On one is fairly smart in deciding what goes into the mask and what doesn't. So I'm not overly concerned about that, but if it's too bad, then I'll fix it and refine. So we'll go ahead and hit apply. See what on one comes up with. And hopefully your machine moves a little bit faster than mine. I'm not sure why uh, this takes so long, but, you know, we'll just be patient. Okay, so as you can see, it made the selection. There's some stuff that I'm going to have to refine. I can see, like right here, uh, it's missing that. But I'm just going to go ahead and hit done. It's going to take me to the refine mask AI. Uh, and actually, that's fine with what it's missing there. I'm going to hit shift X and I'm going to paint this ear back in because I want the ear. There it is. All right. So, you know, you, you can mess around with your uh, particular image that you cut out here and just see if you can restore those areas that may be a little odd. Uh, so our next step is going to be adding in a background. Now, as you can see, I have just the horse, there's this white checker box. That means that it's on a transparent background. If I were to print this, uh, and really, it, it's not even like something that you could print, right? If you were to print this, it would just be no pixels in the background. Uh, it'll print white or leave the paper untouched with ink. Um, however, if you were to post this to a uh, website that can read PNGs, the only thing that would show up is this thing that was cut out. So uh, you can save PNGs if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I believe you can save PNGs uh, or a TIFF because TIFF files can also withhold transparency. But that's for another day. Anyhow, 
Next thing that we're gonna do is hit the uh, paint bucket here. This is going to give us a new layer and it's a new fill layer, okay? Uh, and the color of the layer is really whatever you want it to be. I'm gonna go with a gray layer. So we'll hit okay. And it's going to put the layer in between or above the layer that you're working on. So you just gotta click and drag it below. And now I have a gray background for my horse. Now the color of the layer really only matters if that's the color that you want to keep your layer. But if you are going to add in a texture, you'll go ahead and click on effects. Uh, make sure that you're on that color layer and then click on textures. And as you can see, it automatically adds in the texture. What I recommend you do is click on replace and then pull your opacity all the way up. You have now made a background layer and you can put whatever textures you have available. So let's say we want to go, we'll go with, uh, I don't know. We're going to make something weird. All right. Don't judge me. It's just whatever we got. So there's some fabric. We're on black leather. What's this? Yeah, sure. We'll do that. Now, the benefit of doing the uh, background this way is you can now resize this particular image of the horse so that way we can make a place for Batman to fit. So what you're going to do is hit the letter V on your keyboard. It's going to bring up these bounding boxes. And this is just moving you to the transform tool over here in the uh, left tool well. Now you can just click on scale and you see how I'm scaling down the horse, making it smaller and smaller. Uh, and it looks like that's as small as I'm going to be able to make it, uh, you know, because now I'm starting to get the edge of the photo here. And I can click and drag to move this horse wherever I want inside of the frame. Now, because this was a, uh, because the image is cut off on the right hand side and the bottom, it should be justified to the bottom right of this particular image. Uh, so that way I'm not showing too much of uh, my negative work, but that's gonna be an individual choice how you choose to, to deal with that. Just keep that in mind. Now what I'm gonna do uh, is click on the Batman and we're gonna make sure that we click on it, not just turn it on but also click on it. And I'm going to move this over, uh, still on the transform tool, by the way. And we are going to click on the mask and AI masking. And I don't want the background. So I'm just going to click and drag all the way around Batman. So that way uh, we can get rid of this. Now his left or I guess his right but to the left of us on the screen is another ear or whatever for his mask it's kind of hidden in the dark back there uh, so what I'm going to have to do is paint over that just a little bit so that way you know we get some definition but if it's not there it's not a big deal just keep in mind uh, you know, this, this is subjective to the image that you are working on. Uh, my image, you know, I just chose these photos kind of at random to show you the technique of this. Um, and hopefully this is making sense. If it is, leave a comment down below, smash the like button. Let me know that, you know, I'm not making a fool of myself or, uh, the video is not well received. So, and if it isn't, then that's fine. Just let me know so I can make better videos. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and see what happens here. Hopefully it does a good, good enough job at selecting Batman, but whatever it selects, we're just going to roll with because I'm teaching the principle behind what you can do uh, to make your own composite artwork uh, and put a background and, and put images over a background. This works well if you're trying to build a family collage 
and maybe you want to make it look kind of scrapbookish, uh, you can cut out the family. And with the new uh, masking tool, the line masking tool, you can really make it look like you cut the family out with scissors, uh, you know, as if it was like a real scrapbook. So that could be a cool effect. Um, and then you can even upload your own texture of scrapbooking paper. You know, there, there, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. I'm not sure why this is taking so long. Okay. So here we are with the selection that it made. It made a pretty rough selection, but good enough for what we're doing today. I'm just going to go ahead and hit done. And whatever it leaves it in as for the refine, that's what we're going to go with. All right. So there is that. Now I'm going to hit the V key again on my keyboard. And this time I'm just going to resize it manually. Uh, be careful with this because you can make some very weird proportions uh, if you drag it too much to any one direction. Um, but now I'm going to click and drag and place this wherever I want to. Uh, again, this is a bottom uh, photo. As you can see, it, it cuts off here at the bottom. So it just makes sense to have this at the bottom. Or if you had something else that was going to go over this, like a straight line or just to cover that and hide it, maybe you can put uh, this photo up here and you know really make that collage. But what I'm going to do is pull it down to about there. And I am going to flip him horizontally. So that way he's looking at the horse, right? We'll make it make some kind of sense. Uh, so now there's a horse and uh, a Batman on this particular background. So hopefully that was uh, that made sense. If it did, smash the like button. If you're new here, consider subscribing. My name's Chris. I help new photographers and experienced ones learn how to use All in Photo Raw and get their creative thoughts out and into the world through video content here on YouTube. If that's something you're good with, then smash that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification icon so that way you get messages and stuff whenever I drop a new video here on the channel. Until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.